Rome Total War Online Battle Review. Uh, this one is for Cheetah, who is Galabalus' son. Um, this is apparently his indoctrination match for the Heaven Clan, which is pretty important. Anyway, his army is two Poeni infantry, silver, silver, five sacred band, uh, four of which is silver, silver, and his general is gold, silver, four slingers, gold, silver, and then five sacred band, gold, silver. So quite a hefty upgrade. This is a 25k battle, I think, um, from what well from what Galabalus said on his uh, video of this. Although I think it might be 20k. Uh, anyway, the Julio player played by Barbados the Magnificent, because he spelt it wrong. Um, anyway, his army is four Arch Auxilia bronze, six Urban cohorts bronze bronze two Chiariai bronze bronze and five Praetorian Cav of which General has one bronze attack. Um, already from the start um, I can say that the Roman player has bought the wrong type of cohort for an army for a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if he's not going to upgrade them gold gold or gold silver uh, then you might as well not bring them because um, those are going to get ploughed through being bronze bronze. He also, he's got no upgrades on his Praetorian, so he should have bought Legionaries or early Legionary cohorts. Upgraded them, he would have got some more for to upgrade the Praetorians. And that's that. Right, so I'm going to play the match. Also, I would like an announcement to AVC, who's probably wondering, why in my video the... Your video, uh, your replay for some reason is corrupted. I, it looks like you bought a sort of... Um, what are they called? Uh, an Eastern army, because there's a lot of like Eastern generals on your. Um, well, you're playing with a lot of Eastern generals. For some reason, it comes up like you play Greece. So you've got a Greek banner, but you've got Eastern armor generals and Eastern looking bowmen. You've also got Egyptian chariots for some reason. I don't know. So I don't know if you played with rebels, and. Because um, I don't have rebels unlocked, but I, I will get rebels unlocked if that's that. Um, or if there's, or if you just use the modded version of the game, which I obviously don't have, so answer me that. Anyway, so going back on this, now that that's out of the way, um, I have seen this battle before. I saw it on Galabalus' channel. If you haven't seen it, uh, if you want to see Galabalus' side of things, then that's totally fine. I'm moving around a lot. I've noticed. Maybe I should just leave it. Um, this is gonna lag a tiny, tiny bit on my computer because I've got quite high graphics on. Um, and my computer processor and power is quite slow for some reason because I've got a lot of um, games installed because Steam, that's my only answer, Steam sale. So right now, um, I'm going to, with this battle, I'm going to teach you how aggressivity wins um, and also, um, I don't know, yeah, mostly an aggressive player usually wins. And I was um, on the Total War Center on the Total War Center forum. Sorry, I just hiccup there. Um, I I got into quite a heated debate with someone saying how aggressive people and defensive people um, win or don't. And um, my point, he stopped. He stopped talking after I I gave my final point of well, I'm going to keep playing aggressively and win, and you can just keep on. Um, saying that that doesn't work and then you just sort of haven't answered since. So right now uh, Barbados or the Roman player as we shall probably call him um, is firing off against these slingers. Now these slingers are not in range so they're just going to get shot. Now at this point if this was me already my cab would be on their way to try and get these out of the way. Um, because my cab, well, the, his cab are gold silver, so that's already that's a very, very high um, defense. And so, although I might get shot on the way, these guys will not be shooting my slingers. They'll allow me time to move my slingers forwards and pick them off, and then he'll move his cab, cab battle in the middle, and what have you. However, right here we can see uh, that Cheetah is just keeping his slingers, you know, under fire. Um, I don't know why, he's lost a lot of slingers in there, and although this is last man, so it's not really an issue, but look, at it, it's, it's, I don't know, it's not something I would have done. Um, so at this point, we can say it's, it's not aggressive, but it's an aggressive, the music on this is quite loud. Um, let me just... So 
Sorry about that if you didn't hear my voice. Anyway, so, um, I'll play this. The Roman player, I can't say this is aggressive, but it's sort of aggressive because he's not exactly passive or defensive. He's moved his archers forward and he's shooting upon this. But Tito is acting completely passive on a defensive stance, probably hoping that he'll move his um, army forwards, maybe, but it's not happening. Uh, but he hasn't, you know, it, it, it's already been going at this for several sec for at least half a minute. So at this point, I, personally, would have already moved forward um, to counter that, as I said, and I would be moving with my infantry as such. Now, one of the main reasons why I think aggressive players always win is because they keep their opponent on the back foot all the time. Right now, um, so there we go, so Julia is moving his archers forwards, so there we go, that's one point of focus. So say if I was looking, if I was cheetah right now, and I was looking from this view, I would be seeing that movement forward. So that would be my point of focus, and I would probably try and find a way to focus that. However, if I was the Julio player, so I'm going to go on the Julio's point of view now. If I was a Julio player, I've just moved up my people. Now what I would do is I would move this cav on that side, this cav on that side, move my infantry there, and there we go. That's three points of focus that Cheetah has to look upon. Now you've moved, which means you don't actually have to focus your people, because if they get into combat, that's their main uh, goal. What that dude is like looking completely the wrong way, but whatever. Um, so that was one of my main points of focus, with the fact that I could, I three points of focus for for one person is quite hard. But right now, um, as you can see, these people are very weirdly. Um, very weirdly point, and they're, they're moving forward, and you can sort of tell what's just happened. Those two units have been focused to attack that one. Um, I think that one also. Uh, these these two... Was it? No. Those two on the middle one, and then those two on the edge one. I don't know, it's probably because of selection of troops, um, but you should really be careful, and I use them in rack. So right now, here we go, two points of focus, right now. You got this people moving forward, and then these people moving forward. So right now, he has to act accordingly. And he's just going to stand for, stand still. That's all he's doing. He's going to retreat his archers, let them fire upon the advancing um, Carthaginians. On this side, these haven't moved yet, but he is going to move them over there. Uh, actually, he's going to do that right now. Well, he's going to move his slingers first. These slingers have just been pelted to death, honestly. Yeah, there we go. So these are going to move there. So now there's three points of focus. Um, I think he moved them a little bit too late. He should have... So, yeah, he's going to send his infantry to counter that. But he's not going to move his cavalry. So these ones are still getting closer. Um, so these two sacred bands are going to go into combat here. He's going to throw his peeler into there and then charge, which is a bad idea. Oh, it's an okay idea, I guess. Um, but Peeler on a front of a unit doesn't actually do that much damage. It, it doesn't even do any morale shocks. And here we have another section of things that I just don't understand why people do, and it's a very bad idea. Only Phalanx Pikemen actually do this very well because of their extraordinarily long spears. Um, but you should never back a unit. With that unit, you should probably have gone here and then just advance forward towards the Chirario or the next unit. Such as here, I mean it's a waste of four units there. Four units could be doing something much better with their lives. Here the slingers are, target, are being targeted and targeting this unit. So he's going to move um, his uh, cavalry to charge that. So that's another point of focus now. So there's two points of focus on the um, in the in the thing. All actually met up. There's one each. So here is a point of focus that was done by Cheetah and here by the Roman player. Um, so now, and there we go, so now we have a second point of focus brought up by the Julio player. Um, however, his point of focus is is uh, sort of half failed, uh, unless he does go for the slingers, which, no he doesn't, I didn't think he did. He's going to go for that, so he's going to move his point of focus from there to there. If he had carried on with that charge here, he probably could have just killed that, but because Cheetah um, was focusing on these two. That's so why an aggressive player should always go on something that isn't moving. Right now these aren't moving, which means that it's not focused. Now they are, so it's a point of focus gone. This is now um, what I like to call a passive focus. Sort of, it's happening, but it doesn't matter what happens there, because I'm just going to move along and do that. This is an active focus, because this is a battle that 
it's a uh, is really going to be in the mind. So what's happening is that the player will probably be looking around that area, selecting these troops as you can see there, and now moving along. Um, but here, this is completely passive. I mean, he's not doing anything with his cav. He, he should. He should have moved forward, gone here, and done a sideways charge upon these men. These have lost quite a few men. Um, and then right now, we've got a side charge here, which isn't the best charge, but it's still it's useful. I mean, you've, you've got three units of Sacred Band at, um, cav at your throat. Um, you're going to run. And then right now, this is a point that I commented, Triarii, sad face. And the fact that... Um, I don't know if Cheetah knew this, but Chioria are spearmen, and uh, they have the packing punch of a phalanx. Um, so they are exceptionally effective. And he charges another unit in, which I don't think they had the the right mass. But he's got two units here. He should have moved one unit upon the Chioria and moved out of the way. And it's just... I don't know. Personally, the Chioria didn't do enough damage anyway, because they're only... What are they? They're bronze bronze. Compared to gold, silver... They're not going to do incredible damage, but they're still, you know, going to do a, a, quite a bit. Right here, we've got some more routing. And so these units, because they were sort of not doing a full, um, well, not going to say a full frontal charge, but they weren't, they weren't one unit to one unit. These have sort of packed away, so it's a very inefficient way of putting your man and whatever. So here we have the unit of Triari attacking the Sacred Band. So the Triari aren't getting the cav thing. And as you can see, there is a lot of cavalry um, movement on the red side, but he hasn't actually managed to kill rat them. There was, a, especially at the beginning there, when the the slingers were there along with the cab, and he charged there and didn't do anything. That's because that unit of um, cab um, didn't actually hit a unit of um, phalanx on that pivotal point where he can't do anything. And throughout the whole of the battle, th the red player didn't move his um, Praetorian cav, his general. And I'm just wondering if he realizes this. This person, uh, Barbados the Magnificent. Um, I I'd assume he's m probably he's he's adept as you know mildly adept at knowing what the good troops are, but uh, probably played a lot of campaign games. I'd assume, um, and that's that's good. That's how everyone starts. I assume, except if you're like the Prince of Macedon. Um, but he I don't know. You should always use your all the units you picked even if it's like Tory and Cav uh, general you should always use them um, for for what you have never keep one unit in reserve or whatever the only units you want to keep in reserve are your archers and that's because they're firing upon the enemy pretty much so now it's going to be a last few charges one on these archer oxido with the cav and badoosh. and the last ones on these and they're facing the wrong way but <laughs> so it was a good, it was a good game. It was a good match from um, thing, and as you saw, it, it was, it did involve the deep um, tactical points of view of um, of how to be aggressive and why that's victory. And as you can see, there was a few uh, moments where um, the Julio was aggressive, but he wasn't aggressive enough. He wasn't that aggressive. Um, so Cheetah just managed being the aggressive base. He's the one who moved forward. Remember, he's the one who actually called on the attack. So he's he is to be fair the most aggressive player here, and he won um, from the way I would see it. And um, he bought a lot of a lot. He, he saw, I mean, he had over here when he had his uh, two slingers, two cav, just sitting there doing nothing. That would have been a key point for the judo player to send his cav and destroy that. Um, just kill all the slingers and that's it. Those cav didn't do anything and then charge the cav maybe. Also, as you saw, um, he charged the main three, um, what are they called? Urban cohorts. And and his other three were still behind his line and then he moved them once those urban cohorts were already half dead. And it's just, it's not, it's not the way. Okay, <laughs> that's not what i got to say. Anyway, so well done to Chitu, got a heroic victory, killed um, a, a huge amount of enemies. Um, th uh, two <laughs> 2,302 is only 6 below what he had and uh, he didn't lose that much to be fair, he lost uh, just under a thousand, I think most of that was from slingers and just silliness and if we look into in-depth battle statistics um, he lost a lot of, well he didn't lose a lot, he killed a lot with his cav his sacred band did quite a bit um, but as you can see, you can sort of tell, if you look at the blips his phony infantry and that sacred band unit were the ones behind the lines, as well as that uh, 110. I assume that was one of them that was behind the lines and wasn't actually doing any of the battle. 
Um, he was just standing there protecting his fellows, but he didn't have long enough spears to actually act like that. So, I'd like to reiterate the fact that, although it may seem tempting to put a phalanx behind a phalanx that's attacking, um, only do that if you've got s very long spears and very short spears. So, say if you want a unit of... Um, a, I don't know why it, where it would happen, but a unit of sacred banner, a unit of phalanx pikemen. That's that's the kind of thing you want to act on. And I don't think um, Carthage actually have big phalanx units. Big phalanx, big phalanx units. But anyway, it was a good battle. I thoroughly enjoyed it. To be fair, it was it was it allowed me to rant on about what I believe. And um, so thanks for sending me this, uh, Galablus. And I would like to bite your son sometimes. So uh, maybe you could uh, pop that in um, there. Yes. <laughs> and uh, ABC, if you would like to tell me uh, why, if if you did play the rebels during that battle you sent me, um, that would be very helpful. So thanks for watching, guys, and good hunting.